Welcome back to Boom and Bust. Our guest is Dr. Stephen Globerman. He is a senior fellow at the Fraser Institute. Uh, sir, we were just uh, saying before the break that it seems like from your analysis of where our economy is going in terms of productivity and, uh, and per capita GDP, that we're actually compounding the problem or governments are compounding the problem. And you raised the, uh, the instance of the EV battery uh, promotion and, uh, and uh, uh, basically uh, government largesse as part of the investment in Canada. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit more because the parliamentary budget officer has said that uh, the, the uh, turnaround for getting, quote, our investment back is more like 20 years rather than six years or 10 years. So can you un unpack that for us a little bit more? Well, it's it's. I, I think the main point that uh, I would want to emphasize in that regard is that there's a big opportunity cost when you, when you, uh, as government, when you um, direct the uh, flow of investment capital to specific industries, indeed, specific companies within industries. I mean, you're picking winners and losers, and and that money is fungible. That money could be in the venture capital market. It could be going to companies that investors choose to invest in. What it comes down to is, do we believe that bureaucrats can can choose winning innovations better than capital markets? And personally, I don't believe that that's that's the case. And I think history history supports that assessment. Um, Canada, the Canadian government has had has for, for decades has had innovation programs, both regional and national. And yet Canada has had one of the worst innovation performances over the last two decades of any developed country. And and I don't think it's it's ideological to say that uh one is probably better off having thousands of investors making decisions about what companies should be funded for innovation rather than a handful of bureaucrats. Right, right. right. Can this be turned around? It sounds like it's a pretty endemic or structural problem that we have in Canada now. It's a structural problem. And, and I think what is going to compound the difficulty in turning things around is the perception that if the United States is pursuing mm -hmm. industrial policy, then Canada must pursue industrial policy, which which is uh, is really a, almost a non sequitur. Uh, but, but it certainly isn't good policy if someone else is making mistakes. <laughs> I don't think the appropriate response is to make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's clear that. Uh, um, it's clear that the United States government is very committed to this green energy industrial policy. And, and let me just say, Tony, because I want to be clear about this. Sure. I'm not I am not questioning the appropriateness of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and global warming. The issue is how do we do it? Right. And, and, and a neutral investment policy to me would be better than the government picking and choosing companies that are going to solve this problem for us. So does that mean creating a tax regime and a regulatory regime that encourages this kind of investment? Yes, but but one that is neutral, neutral. to the way it's in. It's, we don't know, uh, no one knows what the technology five or 10 or 20 years from now is going to be most effective at addressing climate change. Um, the idea is to set the environment so that people who have good ideas have the money and the resources to implement those ideas. And there seems to be some innovation that is happening in the Canadian economy on, on this front, uh, uh, not necessarily driven by uh, government grants or subsidies, but uh, you know, we, we do have some good entrepreneurs who are making some strides in this area. Absolutely, and, 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 and the oil and gas producers are, I would have to say, among the leaders in this because they wanna survive, they want their business to survive. They have the financial incentives to find ways to be cleaner in producing their product. And uh, and, and that, that, that's really more to the point. You don't know where these changes are gonna come from. Yeah, and uh, you, I, do you have a, a, some confidence that the oil and gas sector will be part of the mix uh, in the future as well? I, I, I have no doubt that they're going to try very hard to be part of the mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a question of whether the, 
uh, whether uh, the federal government wants them to uh, survive or not, perhaps. We're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Stephen Globerman. He is a senior fellow at the Fraser Institute, also Kaiser Professor of International Business at Western Washington University. Lots more to discuss. Please stay with us. We'll be back after these brief messages. <laughs> 